Praise the Lord. We'll start with the prayer. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Thank you, Abba Father. Thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you have given us to study your word. Lord, you teach us. You help us to understand the secrets and the mysteries of your kingdom. Lord, it is you who is teaching us. It is you who is revealing us. And you help us to understand the secrets of your kingdom. Lord, the things that were hidden for generations are revealed to your people, Lord. And Lord, this mystery is Christ in us. That's what Colossians chapter 1 verse 27 says, Lord. Christ is in us the hope of all glory. Lord, this mystery is Christ in us the hope of all glory, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Lord, you give us the interpretation, the revelation through the Holy Spirit of this word. And Lord, let this word not be a private interpretation, something that is our own opinion or something that is our own interpretation. But Lord, anything that we are studying is from you, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, you guide us, you teach us, you speak through my mouth and you reveal us the truths. Let it be everything of you spoken and nothing of me. Let you increase, Lord, and I decrease. You take complete authority, complete control. And Lord, as we are studying this word, this word is going forth, working in our lives. And this word is coming back, not void, but fulfilling the purpose that we sent it for, Lord. And Lord, we are enjoying the harvest. We are enjoying the result. And Lord, we are, we are this fig tree which you said, Lord, that is planted in this vineyard. And Lord, even in the temptation, even in the trials, when the wine is keep on crawling, creeping over us, Lord, we still choose to keep our focus on you. We still choose to keep our attention on you. And Lord, as we are keeping our attention, as we are keeping our focus, we are seeing, we are able to see miracles and we are able to see the harvest, Lord. I thank you and I praise you and I glorify, Lord, in the most holy and precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen, amen, amen. Amen, amen, amen. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So let's, let's, um, we will go and. Let's continue. Yes, God. So today we'll be seeing a parable where Jesus is explaining. And it this parable is a, you know, I, I never understood this parable. I thought it is we who plant the seed and we experience the harvest. That's what I thought. But actually, there is a lot of meaning behind this parable. Yes, God. So thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Let's go to Luke chapter 13, verse 6 onwards. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 onwards. Praise God. Okay, He's, see this. He spoke also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found none. Then said he unto the dresser of, this, of his vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it, it the ground? And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also 
till I shall dig about it and dung it, and if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shall cut it down. Now, if you see, Jesus spoke a very great truth in a form of a parable over here. And if you see the title, the title is speaking about the parable of the barren fig tree. Now, what is a parable? What's a parable? Okay. A parable is a story. Do you know what a parable is? Yeah, Nathan. Do you know or you don't know? Uh, I say, is a parable like a, a story which tells a person exactly that actually happened, what could, that is an example of what could happen and what you have to learn from it? Okay. Uh, uh, um, a story where. Um, we have to learn from it and apply in the kingdom of God. Yeah, yeah. A parable is a story where the master has to explain it. And there is always a very great, great, great hidden secret in, this, in, in a parable that can only be revealed by the master himself. So we see, uh, and, and most of the time, parables were given by whom? Jesus. And Jesus was the master over here. And he gave the parable that was a story. And this parable was revealed by Jesus himself. Yes? Yeah. Now, here we see the verse. He spoke also this parable. A certain man. Now, here he's saying a certain man. If you see in other places, he would say a man. If you see in the sower and the seed, a man went to sow a seed, right? And all the other parables, he said, a man, a man, a man, a man. Sometimes he said a certain man. And here also he's saying a certain man. Now, why is this? You know, when he's saying this certain man, a certain man, he is being very, very specific. Now, a certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard. Now, when you plant a, a something, do you plant a tree or do you plant a seed? What do you plant? A seed or a tree? We plant seeds, right? Yes. Even, even when we plant... Uh, mango seed, we will plant seeds. When we plant apple seeds, we will plant seeds. Or any fruit, any flower, any any vegetable or any plant, we will not plant the tree directly or the plant directly, but we will plant a seed. But here we see he has not planted a seed, but he has planted a tree. Okay. And, and, and what is this tree? This tree is a fig tree. Where did he plant it? He planted this fig tree where? Not a seed, a tree. Where did he plant this tree? He planted this tree in a vineyard. So this man, he planted a fig tree and not a fig seed. And that fig tree, he planted it in a vineyard. Now what do you plant in a vineyard? Grapes. Yeah. In a vineyard, you plant grapes, you plant wine. Correct? Do you plant trees in the vineyard? No. Right? You don't plant trees. You plant a wine. Now, look at this certain man over here. He has not planted a seed, but a tree, a fig tree. And where has he planted it? In a vineyard and not in an orchard. Now, here in a vineyard, you plant wine. But here he is planting a, a big tree in the vineyard on purpose. Now, who is the certain man? Not Jesus. a certain man. Who is the certain man? Jesus. 
Okay, not Jesus. It's not Jesus. Praise God, Giselle. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. It's a certain man. If it's not Jesus, then it's not us. So who will it be? God. God. Right. God is is this certain man. So certain man had planted a fig tree. Now who's this fig tree? Us. We. We are the fig tree. Who's the dresser of the vineyard? The dresser. Yeah, the dresser of the vineyard. Oh, okay, Jesus. Jesus, yes. Okay. The certain man is God. The fig tree is us. And the dresser of the vineyard is? Jesus. Now, here he purposely planted this tree, this fig tree in a vineyard. And he did not plant it in an orchard on, because he planted it on purpose. Now, if you see a vine, a vine is not a tree. It is like a tree, but it is not a tree. Do you know what a vine is? Why yeah. tree? Pardon? Why is a vine not a tree? It is a plant, but it's not like a tree. Because a tree is erect, it's upright. Okay, but a vine, it, it creeps. It doesn't have its own support. It has to go on something else. Yes. What direction do trees grow? Trees grow. Upright. Horizontally or vertically? Vertically. Vertical, yeah. Yeah. But, but this wine, this wine, it grows not vertically, but horizontally. So a wine is a creeper, it is a climber, it is a crawler that climbs on other things to get support to grow vertically. Because the stem is so, so thin, the stem is so thin that it, it wants support from other things to grow straight, to grow upright. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now imagine... Okay, the Bible is about imagination. So imagine you are this fig tree. And when you are this fig tree, you are over here. And this, and when you are this fig tree, there are vines all around you, cre creeping on you and crawling on you. How will you feel? Very irritated. Very irritated. It will be a condition called no freedom. Correct? Correct. Yeah. Yeah. It will be disturbance. It will be irritating. It will be like, give me a peace of mind. Correct? Correct. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So here, yeah, this tree, God is planting it purposely in this vineyard and not in an orchard. Now the fig tree is, and the wine tree is different in nature and character, but do they come from the animal kingdom or the plant kingdom? The animal category or the plant category? Plant. Plant, right? Yeah. God is saying, God has created each one of us and he has put us under a category called man, human being. And now, because of Adam's sin, this category of man was corrupted. That's what, can you put Romans 5, 19? Praise God. Enoch has come. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. By one man's disobedience, many were made sinners. So by the obedience of one shall many be made righteous. Now, we did not become sinners because we committed sin. You know, I always thought, if you lie, you'll become a sinner. And God is watching. Yes. I always thought like that. 
Yeah. If you do this, God is watching from above. You are becoming a sinner. God is getting angry. God will punish you. See how he will punish you. Yes. Yes, I also have that thought sometimes. I did not have the thoughts. I would I was being told in that way. Okay? You oh. wait and see what God will do to you if you do this. <laughs> yeah, before I came into the world, I was uh, having all this in my mind. But see over here, we don't become sinners because we commit sin, but we are sinners from the day we were born, from the day we came out of our mother's womb, the sin nature was in us. Even when we were in our mother's womb, the sin nature was placed in us. And many times, because I'm a sinner, I thought God will get angry on me. Angry on me. God is not angry on the sinner, but He hates the sin in that person. Yes? Good. Now, we were all born, and we were born under the category of man, which was corrupted. And because it was corrupted, now we were all living in sin. Okay. And now we did not become sinner by committing sin. But because of Adam's sin which he committed, now we all became sinners by default. Now, Jesus and we are the wine. Jesus is the fig tree. Example, huh? when he was man, when he was human. Now, he is the wine. Yeah. But when he was human, he was just like us. Means he was that? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, when you see, didn't all the people come against him? Yes. Yeah. Come and crawl over him? Pharisees. Yeah. Yeah. Telling him, you are not supposed to do this. You are not supposed to do that. Now, did it all come? Did the pressure come? Yeah. Yes. But, but, when the pressure came, did Jesus ever get, uh, you know, so frustrated? He got sad, he got irritated, he felt there was no freedom, and he went so sad that now he never obeyed the plan of God. No. He was insulted, he called the angels, and he showed No, him. no. No. Did Jesus still stay there? Yeah. What is our condition? Lord, you better get me out, or you get that other person out. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you get me out somehow. You get me out, or you get the other person out, or I I will only leave out. Correct? Yeah. Do we do that? Did Jesus do that? Never. No, he never did that. Even though the vines were creeping, crawling, coming over him, did he ever say that, uh, Lord, I just don't want. I end finished. No more. Then just wipe them off. I don't want to go through this. No. Did you ever do that? No. No. How many times you have done that? All the time. Many All the time. time. So many times you have done that. Saying that, uh, you know, we, we our, our, our thinking comes that we are just, you know, just get me out, Lord, please. That's only what I'm asking you. You just get me out. That's I'm going through so much. Yeah, I'm going so through so much. Lord, you don't understand. Please, Lord, please. Yes? And we start begging, right? Yeah. 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 Now put that put the scripture. Come back to Luke chapter 13. Uh, Alison? Yeah. Which was that scripture in Romans? Romans 519. Okay, thank you. Praise God. You know, are you putting the screen? Yes, one minute. Like Praise God. Praise God. It's good choice. Luke chapter 13, verse 6 to 9. Yeah. 
We studied on this, right? Yeah, we had. We had studied on it one time. Yes, this part. Yeah, okay. His book, also this parable. A certain man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he came and sought fruit thereon and found what? He found none. How many times we just, you know, when, when, when there is an argument between us and our friend, how many times we just don't want to be that person's friend? Right? Yes. Many times. Yes. So what do we do? We just say, Lord, I'm just going to get out of this relationship with that friend. Right? Yeah. Yeah? How many times? I have done that many times. If later that person comes, we will, show, we will surely what? Right? Correct. We ought with anger. Yeah. Yeah, but God is saying, stay because I planted you there on purpose to bear fruit and to produce fruit. If you are not able to produce the fruit, it is not, it is not because, you know, God is not, God does not want you to produce the fruit. It is because you have to be patient. If you stay over there in that vineyard, now you will be turning that vineyard into a beautiful orchard. Wow. Praise yeah. God. It's called that vineyard ahead. becomes orchard. What? That vineyard becomes an orchard. Oh, wow. Yeah. What a revelation. We'll study, how it, we'll study how it happens. Okay? Yes. Now, if you see, if there is one tree, from that one tree, if you take a fruit, there will... If, Apple tree, okay. I'll take apples, okay. Or watermelon, okay. If you take that one tree, that apple tree, or in the apple, how many seeds are there? Around seven, eight. Yeah. See, how many more trees will become eight? From yeah. the apples have come more. This God. And that one, one tree, how many apples? Not one apple. One apple contains eight. Yeah. Be like imagine if there are ten apples, then there'll be eighty seeds, eighty trees, right? Praise God. Yeah. So a seed, a seed has the ability to multiply. So who is the one who turns this fig tree, uh, sorry, this vineyard into an orchard? The fig tree. Because example, if I'm, you know, will the tree eat of its own fruit? No. It's always for the other person. It's all, always for the other person. Now example, you are on that you are that fig tree. And you are living the life in the spirit, operating in the spirit, in the supernatural, and you are just experiencing harvest. And all those around you are just so surprised to see that life. And they are also, they also want the same, they also want the same bloom. And you are going and preaching to them. They have also turned from a vine, from a vine to a fig tree. And now they are also producing the fruit. Now what happens? From you producing the harvest, now it goes to the other person. When it goes to the other person, the other person gets it. Then the other person gets it. And now what happens? This vineyard turns into an orchard. That's how a vineyard can turn into an orchard. Like this. I come and preach to Giselle. Example, huh? I come, a fig tree, and I come and preach to Giselle. Giselle is a fig tree. She goes and preaches to Enoch. Enoch is a fig tree. She go, Enoch goes and preaches to Nathan. Now what has happened? From yeah. fruit flow to Giselle. From Giselle, the fruit flow to Enoch. Then from Enoch, the fruit flow to Nathan. And now the fruit is keep on sp spreading, right? Correct. Vineyard. We were, actually, once upon a time, we were all wine. We were Correct. all if there would be one person in the world, the whole family will be creeping, crawling, putting pressure to see whether that one person is holding on or is gone. Right? The family is able to see. Purposely. Putting the pressure to see whether that person can stay there or is being blown off. Right? And when that one person stays there, then it convicts the other person. When the other person is convicted, then the other person is convicted. And that's how it goes on. And that's when it turns into a beautiful orchard. So God has put you there to turn that vineyard into a beautiful orchard. 
Praise God. Of victories. Archer of what? Archer of victory. I have a question, Aston. Yeah. Why did God just plant us as fig trees and not directly put the seed? I did not get your question. Can I okay. Okay. Usually, when God creates anything, He creates it in seed form, right? Yeah. But why did God directly? Did He didn't put the fig seed. He directly put the fig tree. Fig tree because we come from a seed. A, a tree comes from the seed, right? So yeah. It, so why why didn't God just sow the seed? Why did He put a fig tree? Um. Because because the seed is already there. We are all born from a seed anyway. Because we are all born from a seed. We are all born from the seed of Adam, the corrupted seed. We were once because because we were once wine. We were not fig trees. We were once wine. Yeah. We planted the wine and we were not God. Sorry, the wine was planted, and now the wine was growing and the wine was creeping and crawling all over the place. Is it when we are born again we become fig tree? Yes. Okay, okay. Praise God. Praise God. Now you turn from a vine into a fig tree. That's why I I have given an example when Jesus was on the earth he was a fig tree we were what we were vines. Yeah. Because we believe in Jesus now we because we are just like Jesus now we are no longer vines we are turned into fig trees. Praise God. And fig trees to do what? To produce the fruit of the kingdom of heaven. When we were vine, we were producing the fruit of the kingdom of darkness. But now, because we are fig trees, we are producing the fruit of the kingdom of heaven. It Praise is God! Yeah, amazing. Yeah, I, I, I had never, you know, this parable. It's not. You know, many people go after the parable, other parables. This parable is not that. Familiar to us. I never knew of this parable, right? Many people know of the parable of prodigal son and the parable of the lost sheep and all that. But this, yeah. no one has studied, right? Now, Sister Florida, there's one teaching on this. I heard it and it was really amazing. Yeah, yeah. I had studied this from the, her only. Praise God. Praise God. I, I also had studied from this, and and when I heard it, I was like, "Wow, Lord, it's a, an amazing revelation." Praise yeah, God. praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Jesus. Okay, put that verse, Enoch. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Okay. Then said he, so this, he is the certain man. Here in the seventh verse, the he is the certain man. So the certain man is speaking to the wine dresser of the vineyard. Who is the wine dresser? Jesus. Okay. Then said he unto the dresser of his vineyard. This God. Okay. Then said he to the dresser of the vineyard, Behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. Cut it down. Why cumber it the ground? Now, now, now does anyone know what you mean by the word cumber it the ground? Remove? Okay, spoil. Okay, cumber means to uh, make it heavy. Um, Put a burden. This means, why, why is it using the resources? Because it's not producing any fruit. I'm coming here for three years now. Means three years, a lot of period of time. So I'm coming here three years and every day checking here on this fig tree and I find zero fruit. That's how it is. Okay. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. So, so as I said, once we were creeper tree, producing the fruit of the kingdom of darkness. But now I am a fig tree producing the fruit of God's kingdom. Now Jesus is speaking this parable to whom? To the Jews. Now for 2,000 years, here it is saying three years. But what it means, it's just a parable. It's just an example. But for 2,000 years, God has been speaking to them about the Messiah, to the Israelites, 
because the Jews, the Israelites, he was speaking to them about the Messiah. For 2,000 years, he was speaking about the Messiah. And God has been speaking to them, to the people of Israel, saying, repent and change their life, change their, you know, change the, their lifestyle and make God the Savior and come under the law. Keep the word of God and come under the law. That's why God had given them the law to realize that they are a sinner and they need a Savior. So that's why he was telling them, see, you are a sinner and repent. Come, the Messiah is about to come. For 2,000 years, God has been speaking to the Israelites and the Israelites are just continuing to rebel against God. And, and if you see, this is like they were just rebelling and they were just going against God. Yes? Did you understand? Yes. He's saying, behold, these three years I come seeking fruit on this fig tree and find none. He finds what? He finds none. Cut it down. Why does it use the ground? Why does it use the resources? Yes. Alison, what's three years? What does three years signify? Three years means for so long now. For so long. It it. it like to see this uh, for 2,000 years God has been speaking to the Israelites for 2,000 years now until Jesus came, right? Correct. Continuously speaking to them and revealing them but they are just rebelling. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay. Praise God. So, so, so about this Messiah and, and what I mean by 2000 years is from the time Adam committed sin, God had a plan to send Jesus. Because at that time they did not have, you know, because even Abraham, when Abraham was under the promise, you know, it, it, okay, when he, if you see, even when Abraham was under the covenant, he was actually, uh, how to say, he was actually, um, exercising what God had already given him and what God was going to give him. That was Jesus. Right? Yeah. Praise God. So, these people are just rebelling and just, uh, you know, going against God. Okay. Praise God. Are you understanding? Praise God. Yes. Yeah. I'm listening to one question. I'm sorry. Yeah. One, what is uh, what is ground refer to? means the resources like what resources the physical earth resources or the spiritual it means um, means it is using the space you know means here where the fig tree is planted where the fig tree is planted okay when the fig tree is planted now there could be another tree in that same place that is producing the fruit right Mm -mm, correct. Yes. If there is A and B, A is not producing the fruit. So God is saying in that place there could be B who is producing the fruit of the kingdom of heaven. Correct. Praise God. Praise God. So example, example, okay. I come, or oh, there is person A, and he comes and preaches to a congregation of 2,000 people. Okay. And those 2,000 people have accepted the truth, accepted the word. Okay, now what has happened? From that one fig tree, how many fig trees have come? 2,000 fig trees. Yeah. Okay. Now, if each of the 2,000 people, okay, are going and preaching the word. Now, what has happened? There are more fig trees. Correct? That's okay. the orchard. That's the orchard. So here God is saying, this fig tree is not producing the fruit. And see what Jesus is replying. And he answering said unto him, Lord, let it alone this year also till I shall dig about it and dung it. What happened? Dig about, dig about it and dung it. And if it bear fruit well, and if not, then after that thou shalt cut it down. 
Dr. Scott. Okay, someone is saying the God was speaking to them 40 years in the wilderness. Even before the wilderness, God was speaking to them about the Messiah. Every time God was speaking to them and revealing to them about the Messiah, every time, that's why every time when God was speaking, God was saying the Messiah was going to come. And that was, you know, he was speaking not only for the 40 years in the wilderness, but even more than that, even before that, he was speaking about the Messiah because the people were in sin. There was nobody perfect. And God wanted the man to have the freedom of choice, so he sent Jesus. Now there was a new law that got implemented, that is the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now when this new law got implemented, now man had freedom of choice. But before Jesus came, before Jesus died, they did not have the freedom of choice for 2,000 years. After Adam committed sin, everyone was in sin. And now God was continuously speaking to them about the Messiah. He spoke, continuously spoke. And he had a plan. And this plan, he wanted people, like people of faith. Like Isaac, Abraham, all these people were people of faith. And through them, Jesus could come on this earth. That's what you see in Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. It's speaking about from Abraham all the way down to Jesus, how it worked. Miss God, I hope that person understood. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. Through the prophets and through the prophets, he was prophesied prophesying to the people that the Messiah will come. There were so many prophets, Jeremiah, Isaiah, and so many others. Praise God. Okay. Thank you, Jesus. Now, God here, God over here is saying, these are my people. Okay. This, these are my people, and I want them to produce the fruit of the kingdom of heaven. But, He's telling the wine dresser of the vineyard, the people are just rebelling. And what is Jesus saying? Give me one more chance. I will go. Okay. I will go and I will teach them. I will go and take their place, their punishment. That's what he's saying over here. Till I shall dig about it and dung it. And now, since I shall dig about it and dug it, now what will happen? What will happen? Now, since he's going, Jesus is saying, give me one more last chance. Now, when I go and I give and I take the punishment, now they will have the freedom of choice. Now, they will produce the fruit of the kingdom of heaven. Are you understanding? That's why Jesus is saying, give me one more chance. I will go down, I'll become man, and I will take their punishment. I will dig about it, dung it, and if they fruit well, then you don't have to cut it down. But if not, then you shall cut it down. So, so it's like this. Jesus has died for the whole world. The people who were born, the people who are already there living at the present, and the people who will be born in the future. But, but only few of them are accepting the truth, and only few of them are fig trees. Otherwise, the rest of the world, they are still living in sin. Praise God, are you understanding? Praise God, yes. Giselle, are you confused? No. Praise no. God. Did you understand? Yeah. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, yes. praise God. Praise God. Thank you. What is dung it, uh, dig it and dung it mean, Alison? Dig it and dung it means I shall go, become man, take their punishment. Now, when I teach them the truth of the kingdom of heaven, now if they're not accepting, then you in that then you chop them down. If they're accepting, now they will produce the fruit. And only few of them. That's why Jesus said, "The house is plenty, but the laborers are few." Those laborers are the ones who are the victories. Producing the Those fruit. are the boy disciples. Yeah, the disciples, the believers in Jesus. Praise God. Yeah, praise that's God. What, that's what he means by dig it and down it. Everyone has the freedom of choice, but only few became the fig trees. Rest of them are being chopped down because they are still living in the vineyard. Now the people of God are where? In the orchard. Who were once planted in the vineyard, now are in the orchard.
watch it and and you know what they may be no, no one you know to you know to, you know when 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 you are producing the fruit okay there will be no one to eat it there may be no one but don't you worry once the fruit is ripe and it will fall from the tree when it falls from the tree now there will be another tree growing so no matter even if there is no if there is no at the other side a person to come and eat the fruit don't you worry because when the tree is when the fruit is ripened when the fru fruit is fully ripened and great to eat it will fall it you know separate its part depart from the tree it will fall to the ground and that's when there will be another tree growing over there praise god amazing amazing arson praise god parable that's why right. it's a very very important parable because it's talking about the what happens when you are born again thank you jesus praise god hallelujah okay now you know god's you know if you see god's love and god's patience it is so immense right see how uh, lord give me one more chance i will go he saying three years okay give me this one fourth year this last year let me go and dig about it and dung it and let's see whether it produces the fruit see how much god's love is and see how much his patience is right yes okay let's go to 1 peter 123 Yes, God. Hallelujah. Okay. Yeah. God. Does anyone want to read? Giselle, do you want to read the verse? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible, by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Yes, God. So the very day. the very moment i am born again now i am no longer having the sin nature but i have the new nature of christ in me now the holy spirit is now living in me and he will never leave me nor forsake me now he is in me i am turned from a vine into a fig tree producing the fruit of the kingdom of heaven You know who's the wine? What the wine produces? Grapes. In God's kingdom. Thorns. Grapes, yeah, but in okay. God's thorns. Thorns. Yeah. Creepers. Creepers. It does not produce a creeper. It is a creeper. Yeah, it is a creeper. You know what it produces? Producing evil thoughts. Evil thoughts producing the fruit of the. Oh. of darkness yeah 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 sickness it will bring sin it will bring disease it will bring poverty it will bring wreck it will bring curse all this will come because you are a vine but when you become a fig tree now what are you producing you are producing the fruit of the kingdom of heaven now when you are producing the fruit of the kingdom of heaven now what is happening you are you are experiencing healing deliverance protection prosperity the whole package of salvation included everything included in it praise god praise god praise god okay let me show you one last scripture okay and we'll study on that go to colossians chapter 2 verse 9 you know i love the scripture colossians chapter 2 verse 9 See this. For in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, what is this? Who in whom? Who is this? 
Christ. Christ. For in Christ dwells all the fullness of God in him. That's what you mean by the word Godhead bodily. Means when he was physically on this earth in the body, now he was in him was dwelling the full fullness of God. Now, is Jesus living inside of us? Yes. Is Jesus in you and me? Yes. So what does that mean? Jesus, in him dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, because Jesus is in me, now in me dwells all the fullness of the Godhead bodily. Now, the fullness of God, I, you know, in the Old Testament, they only had a portion of anointing. But now, we have the fullness of anointing given to us because of Christ Jesus. Because we have made righteous to God. We are the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. And what is righteousness? Right standing with God, having the divine nature of God. Yeah, the right standing with God, having the very nature of God. So now, because Jesus is inside of me, now in me dwells the fullness of God, the nature of God inside of me. That's why now I'm experiencing healing and I'm producing the fruit of the kingdom of heaven. So where is Christ Jesus? Inside of me. How do you know? Through the scripture. Which scripture? In the many scriptures, I take um, John 4-4 four, four also. John 4-4. Four, four. 1 John 4-4. Four, four. Yes. Yeah, 1 John 4-4. Four, four. Yeah. And the same spirit of God that rose Jesus from the dead. Romans 8-11. Yeah. That's Romans 8-11. Yeah. The spirit that raised up Jesus. Yes. Okay, let me show you one scripture. Yeah. And one scripture. Okay, good. Colossians chapter 1 verse 26. Oh, yeah, Jesus, the hope of glory. Yeah, it's God. Oh, the secret of the mystery. Of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Even the mystery which has been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to his saints, to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, which is Christ in us, the hope of all glory, the hope of glory. Well, the devil is coming and dodges you and saying, oh, you know, God does not love you. You know, show him Colossians 1, 27. Christ is in me, the hope of all glory. Praise God. Now, how many of you believe what we just read? Oh, only one. Only one. Okay. Only one of you believe. So others, Christ is not in you. How many of you believe that Holy Spirit comes and goes, goes on a vacation? That's why you have to call him welcome Holy Spirit, right? Is that what the scripture is saying? No. And what is the scripture saying? Christ is in you, the hope of all glory. If you see in Hebrews, it is saying, Christ will never leave you, nor he will never forsake you. Yes? Praise God. The scripture is saying, if Christ is for you, who can be against you? Praise it's God. Chapter 8, verse 31 says, Christ is in you, Christ is with you, and Christ is with you, Christ is in you, and now no one can be against you. Christ is for you. Yeah, for you, in with you, and in you. And no one can be against you. Please yes. Go. yes. You know, we are, we are the ones who have given much importance to the devil. Even the devil, he's zero power. We have given the power to him. Correct. Say this, the devil is under my feet. The devil is under my feet. The devil is under my feet. Where is the devil? Under my feet. My feet. Under my, under my feet. So how do you know? I'm not looking for a particular scripture, but how do you know that the devil is under your feet? He was defeated. And greater is the spirit of God inside of me than the evil spirit in the world. It's very, really, very simple. Where there is evil, there cannot be holiness. Where there is holiness, there cannot be evil. 
Now, fresh is the head. We are the body, correct? Correct. Body goes, the head goes with it, right? Correct. So I go, if Christ goes with me, that means that there is holiness of Christ Jesus. There cannot be any evil. That's why the devil is where? Under your feet. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Because wherever the body goes, the head goes with it. So wherever I go, Christ goes with me. And where Christ is, there cannot be evil. That's why the Praise devil God. And the devil is saying, how come you put me under your feet? We are saying, yeah, we put you under your under our feet because you have no more power. Yes? Yeah? Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Please God. You know, many times they say, get me out or get the other person. Get each one of us out. But, but, the devil is trying to put you there because the devil is trying to tell you, get out of that place because he does not want you to produce the fruit. Because he knows if you are going to endure in that vineyard, you are surely going to produce the fruit of the kingdom of heaven. And he does not want that because the devil always wants to come to steal, kill, and destroy. That's why he will try for you not to experience healing, not to experience deliverance. That's his first main part. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All those who are sleeping, say hallelujah. <laughs> and then he muted again. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. And I was going to say hallelujah. Yeah. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Okay, you can take the scripture down, Enoch. We can take some testimonies. Okay, Giselle, you had put me a question in the WhatsApp chat, right? Which question? The forbidden tree? Yeah, yeah. In the WhatsApp? So that forbidden tree, you know what is that forbidden tree? That forbidden yeah, yeah. Tree, in other words, is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Now, there were, two, there were two trees in the Garden of Eden. Not one, two. Tree of life and tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Oh, okay. And Adam and Eve, God gave them the freedom of choice, either they could eat of the tree of the life or they could eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. If they would eat of the tree of life, they would continue to live in the righteousness of God. But because they ate of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, they chose by themselves to live in sin. God had given them freedom of choice. God was not forcing them. They choose the tree of knowledge of good and evil and that's why they were sin. And after that, until Jesus resurrected, Jesus died and Jesus resurrected, that was the old covenant. From Adam's sin to Jesus dying, that was the old covenant. In the old covenant, they did not have the freedom of choice. Because by default, they were born under the sin. Till Jesus died, it was old covenant. Until Jesus died, yes. Okay, okay. Ooh. Yeah, even the woman with the issue of blood, Jairus, they were all under the old covenant. They said, we'll be healed. The woman with the issue of blood said, we'll be healed. But now... And that's why even some people said, if it's your will, heal me or not. But now, because we are in a new covenant, God could not break his words of, because he could not break the law of sin and death. So he implemented a new law that was the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Now, after we believe in Jesus, we have the freedom of choice whether we want to continue to live in sin, the virus called sin, or we want to live in the salvation, in the healing, in the package, the complete package that God had given us. It's our choice. We can choose. That's why God put that tree over there, to give them the freedom of choice. Even today now, okay, we can either choose the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus, 
to live a life of healing, deliverance, protection, blessing, or we can choose the law of sin and death where we are living in sin and we are going to hell. It's our choice. Yes? Yes, God. The life of tree, the tree of life, that was Jesus. Yeah. That's God. Yeah, that's that's the that's the law of spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Walking in life with Jesus means walking in life with love, with joy, with peace, with healing, with protection. That is walking with Jesus. Praise God. Life. That's why I'm supposed in life, I'm supposed to walk with Jesus. Because when I'm walking with Jesus, now this life is not an ordinary natural life, but this life now becomes a supernatural life. Praise God. That's why the tree of life is Jesus. Praise God. Praise God. Did you understand? You got your answer, Diesel? Yeah, yes, Alston. But I have also one more question. But why did God create the um the, the tree of life and evil? The knowledge, the tree of knowledge. You know, even I had that question before. Okay. I had that question. Lord, if you know everything from the beginning. Yeah. Okay. And you are a loving God. Why did you put that tree there? Because yeah. they would commit sin. So why did you put that tree there? He put those he wanted to two trees, the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. Let me complete it now. Okay. He put the tree of life and the tree of knowledge of good and evil because he wanted them to choose. God, God never created man as robots. God loved man so much, so much, he wanted man to choose. And God had given the dominion to whom? To man. So God cannot say, I'll choose on your behalf. Because the dominion was given to man. Yeah, but why did, why did evil have to exist? Why did that, uh, yeah, that, that yeah, because, evil part of the tree of knowledge have to exist? Because, because it was not that God is evil and God wanted man to live in sin. No, it is man who could choose whether they could continue to live in the life of Jesus or they could live in the law of sin and death. That means the tree of knowledge of good and evil. They choose, okay, regardless of God, they choose by themselves, man choose to live in sin. Praise God. Yeah. God put the tree there to give us choice. God did not want us like to be soldiers. Soldiers have to obey the master. He did not want us to be like that. We have to obey him and we have to do what he says as robots. That's why he gave us the freedom of choice. And God did not force us even. Correct. Please. That's why I'm, so, I'm not supposed to force others. Yeah. Each one of us have the freedom of choice. Thank yeah. you, Mr. Please go. No problem. Yeah. You're learning. Yeah, Enoch. Enoch, you wanted to say something, right? Yes. Yeah, you can go ahead now. So I have two testimonies. Yeah. The first one is I think on Thursday. Yeah. I was having my school online, so so when I was attending the se my second period, totally there was only th three periods, so I was attending my second period, so in the mm, there was a test, then I finished the test, then after some time there was a severe headache that I could not even sit. So I was see, like this. So so after that, it was it was more heavier than before than any any deaths in my life. So I gone to my mom, mother and said it. Then she said to confess one Peter two twenty four. Then I and confessed the healing scriptures, so I did the healing scriptures and confessed 1 Peter 2 24. Then after that, after some time, the headache was gone and a severe stomachache came. So yeah. then that was also very severe that I could not even sit. So I, but I managed and I attend your class. 
then after that i did some drawing then then i didn't even realize the stomach ache was gone praise god amazing thank you jesus wonderful you know praise god amazing praise god. yes thank you thank praise you god. wonderful praise god thank you jesus praise you jesus yes praise god wonderful so then see one else one minute rita aunty you did not get to share last week you have you you have must have have lot of testimonies you can share today i have another testimony oh yeah 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 i know i said two testimony completed one so so my next testimony was i think one month ago was or three weeks ago that there was a tamil test they one the test was on thursday but they only said on uh, tuesday so i was very weak in tamil in third standard so i was very scared and we were i only remembered in the night and we study quickly then we i gone and attend my happy family class we uh, before sleeping we said you uh, I, i had the mind of christ and i slept then in the morning i woke up earlier but i study but i forgot to study so after that the first period was gone then the second the second period was only tamil so in the in, in between they would give 15 minutes break to give our eyes rest so so i gone for that and then also i forgot then when the they tamil ma tamil ma'am comes into the meeting i remember that is a tamil test then there was a quickly a thought in my mind that no one was in the room so so you have the tamil textbook no you have the pdf no you no no one will identify that you can copy and write he said into my mind because i didn't i studied well but he said i did not study well Okay. Yeah. Then I said I I didn't I studied well even though I will get wrong also even though I get zero also I will be honest I said and I did the test then I fee then I a fearful thought came to me when when I was going to click the submit button what if you get zero out of twenty it was same. i will not i said i will not get 20 i will not get g out of 20 i will get 20 out of 20 so that i get 20, got 20 out of 20 praise god yes but mm-hmm. remember you know when when you are speaking you have to use the name of jesus because if you are only going to speak i get 20 out of 20 that's called positive speaking right yeah even i made that mistake speaking but no not in the name of jesus yes god yeah That's yeah we have to say yeah here it can be that means we are speaking positive speak in line with the word yes we should speak in line with the word not positive yeah yeah i said in jesus name only but i forgot to say here oh, okay okay yes god yes Yeah, Rita Aunty. Yes. Yeah, praise the Lord, Elston. Praise the Lord. Yeah, I got testimonies, so I will share it. Last time I couldn't because my phone was just stuck. Yes, praise God. So, uh, I just want to start with uh, like somebody, one of my friends, mom. She came from Goa and she was in hotel quarantine. And um, before that, were also she, she to get her visa. Also, I prayed for her, so she got a visa. She got a ticket, and she arrived like three weeks before. 
uh, but the time is first test was negative and the second test was when they do the hotel hotel, uh, hotel quarantine test the second yeah. test was not clear not clear and somebody else was staying with them because uh, another two person was staying with the that auntie so you know yeah. so we didn't know like uh, who is negative and all the son they got uh, so that uh, the boy was negative, but her dad have to come the report and this auntie. So her report was uh, not clear. Then we then we pray and like you know I told her her daughter to confess Luke four eighteen nineteen and like you know and to confess one Peter to twenty four that no yeah. she is completely healed even if there is any virus or whatever we don't know but still and then uh, then they did a second test so it was normal so she came home from the hotel quarantine so. That was the uh, first testimony, praise God. And the second testimony was uh, one one girl, she's six years old and she got like a patches of uh, allergy on her skin. And she was like, you know, in terrible pain that time. So I just uh, con uh, did a confession prayer, rebuking and uh, like, you know, cursing the all. And, and I told that she got a resurrection body of Jesus. So. And then I told her, told their parents to say uh, 1 Peter 2, 24 with the blood of Jesus that's flowing on her. And she's, yeah. uh, uh, she's, she's getting the resurrection scheme. And thank you, Jesus, by you, she's completely hit. So, by, yeah. and then the same uh, child, she got some pain in her heart. Like, you know, that some, some kind of uh, sound. And doctor said she had to go underneath the search, like not surgery, but you know, with the, um, I don't know what it's called, but uh, she had to go through with the uh, scanning, some kind of scanning. So his dad was so afraid and her mom too, because he's the first child, only one child. And, and but the, with the grace of God, uh, she's totally healed. Her allergy is gone and the report is normal. So nothing is there to worry about her heart. Yeah, because when she born, her heart was, uh, there is a hole in the heart. So they were worried about her. So praise God. So she's completely healed. God has blessed her with a new heart. So nothing was there in her heart. Or Doctor, doctor didn't got anything. Praise, praise God. God. So another, thank you, Jesus. praise God. So another thank person, you. thank you, Jesus. Another person also, she got a heart attack. And after praying, yeah. she was good. And like, you know, in three days, she went like um she she no this lady she went home the same day by herself so after praying you know and i gave the uh, one peter to 24 to confess to her daughter so she yeah. healed as a, another lady was got the stroke and she was in the hospital for two days and yeah. uh, with the prayer she was also healed praise god and praise she went god. home yes so another person's family was in the pro, uh, in a, in a, like you know every time issues and no peace with the family and all. So after giving the scriptures, giving the word of God, sending everyday word of God, so you know making them str uh, strong. Yes, yeah, say it yeah. as you mean it. And all repeat? the words and whatever. Yes. Can you just repeat that? Yes, I I because there was some disturbance. Let's say it as you mean it. Yeah, say it as you mean it, which I'm sending it every day because I did a broadcast and I'm sending whoever comes in the prayer. So I'm sending them. So what it, how it goes, they are feeling like, you know, or some people tells me the day they start with that, uh, like prayer, like, you know, shyly also doing the recording. So they are starting with the day, you know, when it goes in India, it's early morning what they, when they're receiving it. Here also, like you know, most of the people they says it's really helped them. Yeah, the word yeah. they say it as you mean it. So they are starting with the listening the word of God. So yes, it was so feeling blessed. Yeah, and even my cousin sister she told me that she's feeling so good. Like you know, she's coming. She's she feels like she's more closer to Jesus after sending everything prayer. Then look for eighteen nineteen. I send a prayer. Then Hebrew 13, 18, uh, 13 8 says, like, you know, all the hurts and rejection, yes. that prayer is there so to destroy it. So even that helps. So, yeah, praise God. So their family is back in peace. So all glory to God. So somebody got the urine infection for 30 years, like child, since she's starting, like, you know, when she was, yes, now she is 38 years old. So I, I don't know how long, but roughly like a 30 years, she's, she was getting the urine infection on and off. Yeah. 
and after doing the prayer and like, like you know 1 peter to 24 same scripture she is not having the same day when i pray it is gone so no more pain nothing it was clear praise god so praise god. another was with the jo praise god so another one was in the in Amer usa so he was having the problem with the job they got a case and all this but you know uh, the employer was very good to this person so i gave him the look for 1899 i did the prayer for him and i told them to bless the people who put you in trouble yeah because he get some yeah. issues there arguments and um, they want to put him in the jail so i just told him about the passion of christ like you know how he went through to the calvary and i told him don't worry because it was annoying him every time they said oh one person will go in the jail so i said just keep focus on jesus jesus has went through in the jail because of you yes. yeah yes. so you don't worry you don't have to go through because you are innocent there won't be any problem so whenever the people who are colleagues was troubling you with that word yeah it's not them but it's the devil who is speaking on behalf of them to trouble you so you know irritating you so i just say, i told him just focus on jesus so he's the one who took everything so you don't have to go through with it and like two days before he went he 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 left that job no case nothing and he is now with a better job blessed job everything is good salary is good so it's a favor of god so yes praise god so everything god. is blessed in his name praise god yes and the last testimony yes and last testimony i can say i'm sorry it was a lot um no last testimony i prayed i prayed this couple for uh, i think a year or maybe 6 ma 8 months roughly 6 8 months yeah so after yeah. 18 years of marriage they are conceived she is conceived after 18 of 18 years of marriage so praise god all glory to god for all this blessing yes praise god all glory to god yes that's the last testimony listen praise god praise thank god. you yes praise god wonderful testimony yes god Praise God. Yeah, praise God. Yeah. Yes, praise God. I heard you. I I heard you teaching what giving the uh, reshwa. I heard you today. Praise God. All glory to yeah, God. It was, yeah, glory yeah, it was. Sorry, you, it yeah. was really nice to support each other. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. It was amazing. Thank I was Jesus. listening. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God, Enoch. I, uh, Enoch, your testimony was so amazing. Praise God, especially when when the thought came that you get zero, but then you um, defeated the thought. You resisted the devil using the word of God. It's the application of the scripture. Yeah. Yeah. Amazing. Praise God. Thank you, Aston, for your amazing teaching. I love this teaching. It's so interesting. Yes. Praise God. Yes, it's one of my favorite teaching as well. Yeah, same, same. Praise God. Praise God. Yes. Okay. Anyone else? Oh, we close today's session. Jisal, do you have anything to say? Or please, God, that, that's it, Aston. Please, God. Yeah. God, I also heard you in the morning teaching. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Because Jesus. I was in my daddy's room coloring, so. Oh, so cute! <laughs> so cute! Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Okay, so we can close this session. Let's God feel close with the prayer. Does anyone want to do the ending prayer? Jizel. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Father, we thank you. We praise you. Jesus we thank you we praise you holy spirit we thank you and we praise you lord jesus you are so good your love endures forever lord jesus we thank you for taking our entire spirit of infirmity taking our sin taking the shame on you on the cross 2000 years ago so that today through you we are living a prosperous healthy complete whole life nothing missing and nothing broken thank you lord jesus for anointing alistin to to break the truth through the holy spirit 
into such easy language and making it so simple to understand that we can apply it in our everyday life. Father, thank you for blessing his family, him, his entire life. And thank you, Lord Jesus, for blessing everybody in this meeting, to, uh, for anointing everybody to preach the gospel, to cast out demons, to heal the sick, to give the news to the poor. Thank you, Jesus. Lord, you are so good. Thank you, Lord, for giving us your power, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for being with us wherever we go. And your presence follows us wherever we go, Lord, because you are living and active inside of us. Thank you, Jesus. We praise you, Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen, amen. 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 Praise God. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. We can pray Thank you. thanks. Thank you. Da 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 da